Okay, so I have to be very careful with the way I talk about this topic, because today we're talking about Mike Babcock, former Toronto Maple Leafs head coach and a guy who had not too great of a departure from the organization because the team wasn't really doing all too well, because he got fired, and because of the stories that came out after he was gone. Babcock was in a position where we learned about stories like how he treated Mitch Marner, how he forced him to write out players on the Maple Leafs and rank them in order of work ethic and compete level, and then rumor has it Babcock went out there and told the rest of the teammates what Marner's thought process on that idea was. That was a big story a while ago, but... Babcock, ever since taken some time away from hockey, has since returned to a broadcast analyst role on NBC Sports. And because of this new venture into the media industry, he caught up with Pierre Lebrun, wrote up an article about his experience and the way things went down with him. And if you want to go over onto the article, I'll leave a link in the description. It is indeed right here. Mike Babcock breaks his silence about the firing, Mitch Marner, Johan Franzen, and more. This article was met with a lot of controversy amongst those who read The Athletic every day, but because that's on paid-for material, we're going over onto NHLTradeTalk.com, where a summary is provided and they give their own take as to what's going down. So for Mike Babcock, it's not really difficult to understand why this guy is an important person. He coached the Red Wings over and over and over again to success, making the playoffs. You could debate that's because they had some really good players, but the fact remains, the Red Wings were a good team from the mid-2000s up until the mid-2010s, and Babcock was the man behind the bench for each one of those seasons. He was also Team Canada's coach at the Olympics, and of course, you know, Team Canada was really good at the 2014 Olympics. They won gold there with ease. They had a harder time winning gold in 2010 against Team USA, but Babcock was still the guy who was behind the bench for that year too. So Babcock was a winning coach, and that's kind of the reason why he was always seen with this level of respect around his name. However, after the firing, the stories that came out about this guy, how people have interacted with him outside of the ice rink environment, etc., they've really put a different spotlight as to the guy who many people thought would be the guy to coach the Maple Leafs out of their first round woes, and eventually to Stanley Cup prosperity. Let's go over onto the NHL Trade Talk article. After Mike Babcock was let go, it didn't take long for a story to surface that he had revealed details of a private conversation with Marner about the work ethic of the members of the Maple Leafs roster, one in which Marner had ranked everyone. It was an awkward position to put a player in with his teammates, and the entire situation was described as the coach having singled out a star for the sole purpose of embarrassing him. In short, speculation was that Babcock was making an example out of a talented young kid who, at the time, could have probably worked harder at both ends of the ice. The story exploded and tons of testimonies followed about how Babcock was part of the coaching fraternity who often emotionally abused players to get what he wanted out of them. Babcock contends it was a huge mistake doing what he did in the Pierre Lebrun article, but he notes the way the story had been relayed since his termination had not been accurate. He didn't post a big sheet on the wall or intentionally signal Marner out, and in fact, he says he went to the player and offered to fix something he knew he'd likely set in motion, but unintentionally. Here's the story from Babcock's point of view. Apparently, he had a private meeting asking Marner where he thought he would rank himself in terms of work ethic. He had intended to keep the specifics of all the player and coaching meetings private, but when he spoke with Tyler Bozak later, he showed him where Marner ranked himself. And he said, when we were talking about competing and I said, well, look where Mitch ranks it. He knew he messed up in sharing that conversation he had with Marner. And then he says, as soon as I did that and he saw the list, I knew that I made a major mistake. After meeting with Bozak, I went right into the dressing room, I grabbed Mitch, and I said, Mitch, this is what I did. I screwed you here. The next part of the article says that Marner didn't want to make a thing out of it, so both sides left it alone. Babcock realizes that doing so was a mistake. He says he should have addressed the team and admitted he accidentally threw Marner under the bus, and he said he could have made a lesser deal out of it. After speaking with Lamorello, etc., he says there's no question that it was all on me, not on Mitch, it was all on me, I made a mistake, my fault. So, from this, and obviously I'll leave a link in the description to the NHL Trade Talk article as well, this is what we're reading off of, it's going over the Pierre Lebrun piece. It kind of gives an idea that Mike Babcock really didn't go out there trying to set a blaze, a controversy, or try to make somebody feel bad, it really makes it seem like it was an accident. And at the very least, you know, from the way it's described here, I can somewhat believe that. 
It's just the way that the media took apart this story back when it originally aired. If I try to remember, was it like 2019? Late 2019? Yeah, it was like immediately after you got fired, pretty much. Back when this story surfaced in late 2019, it seemed like a lot more of a big deal than it appears to be when Babcock is describing it now. And obviously, I'm no historian here, but I do remember back when we were talking about this Marner story all those months ago, you can feel free to correct me if my memory is not serving me right, but I do believe Mitch Marner didn't really talk about it as if it was as big of a deal as the media was making it appear to be. Like, I remember people talking about this all over on TSN, on Sportsnet, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, all that stuff, etc. But when Marner was interviewed about it, it was just, uh, yeah, you know, it was just a thing that happened. You just got to move forward past it and look towards the future. And I kind of thought it was weird how, for a story that was being blown so out of proportion by the media, the actual guy involved was just playing it off super casually like that. And at the time, I was thinking, okay, it's because it's Toronto. Toronto's huge. It's a hockey market. You know, these players don't want to make a big deal out of something that really should not be the top of their priority right now, you know? They're a team that wants to win games under a new head coach. Marner's probably more focused on how well he's able to penalty kill than what Babcock did to him back when he was a young player in the NHL, you know? And that's kind of how I perceived it back then, but now with Babcock coming out and explaining his side and apparently shedding the truth on it, it makes a lot more sense to me personally as to how Mitch Marner was reacting to the big media outcry when this story came public in the first place. However, the next part of this Babcock interview gets a little bit more muddy. Babcock was accused of verbally abusing former Red Wings forward Johan Franzen as well. After retiring, Johan Franzen called Babcock a great coach, but a terrible person and a bully. Babcock says nothing can hurt you more than something like this. Babcock says he feels awful that this was something Franzen was feeling at the time, and he didn't know about it. Considering the former coach is such an advocate for mental health awareness, it stings that he was unintentionally doing mistreating one of his players. There are some more quotes talking about, oh, you regret this stuff, yada yada yada. It's just, this has kind of been the perspective that I've seen everybody kind of bring up, and it's one that does kind of ring a bell with me as well. It's kind of weird how Mike Babcock is out there talking about himself as the victim here and speaking about his own work with mental health awareness and advocacy as somewhat of a shield towards making it appear like he's the victim in this situation and as Johan Franzen going out there and saying stuff that Babcock wasn't really identifying with. And Babcock kind of goes out and he says, you know, when you're talking about this kind of thing, if the person, whether it's a coworker, spouse, student, if they think that's the environment, that's what they're feeling. Now, I sure wish I would have known about it then and I could have done something about it. But besides apologizing, there's nothing I can do about it now. Does it sting? Does it hurt? Absolutely. To me, it's kind of interesting the way that this is phrased, the way that he spoke about the Johan Franzen thing. It's very akin to me to saying something, in my opinion, at least, along the lines of, Oh, well, it's just unfortunate that Johan Franzen felt that way. I wish I could have known about it. I can only apologize now. There's nothing I can do about it. It's a lot more of a sorry if you feel offended kind of thing. Not really a sorry for what I did kind of thing, but I'm sorry that you felt the way that you did about what I've been doing. Because there's this whole talk about mental health advocacy. I'm like this. It hurts because I support mental health. So it kind of speaks to me in a way that indicates that Babcock might see himself as a victim in this situation, where he's on the tail end of these accusations made against him by Johan Friends and he's a bully. And if you're kind of feeling as uncomfortable as I am right now, you kind of get the point, right? Like for a guy whom a lot of people have interacted with in the past and said somewhat similar things about him, to come out and say all this stuff about mental health awareness and that he wasn't aware and that he feels sorry that Johan Franzen perceived the environment that way doesn't really feel right in my opinion. But you know, at the end of the day, that's kind of how it's written out here on the Athletic article, so we'll leave a link to that in the description as well as the NHL Trade Talk article because that's the one that we've been reading. You know, we can't read Athletic stuff on here. It's paid for material. So talk to me in the comments what you think about this Babcock stuff. If you're a Leafs fan, what's your perception on the Marner thing? You know, I said it myself. I think it's honestly a little bit more understandable now with Babcock's side of the story out there as to why Marner reacted the way he did when the media got a hold of this story a year ago. But as for the friends and thing, that kind of feels awkward to me. I'm not really too sure about you, but yeah. So tell me in the comments all that stuff, what you think. Hope you enjoyed this video. Shout out to Charles and Lion 9.
and bye.